Hey guys, my name is Emily and today I'm going to be showing you guys my 10 minute everyday makeup using drugstore products. Okay, so I'm going to start by priming my face and I'm using today the e.l.f. Mineral Infused Face Primer. Um, so I just take a little bit, dab it on both fingers, start by rubbing it on my cheeks and I almost do a pressing motion because with this primer if you really rub it too much it might ball up but it is really good to fill in some pores and just give you a nice layer base. Um, so now we're going to go in with foundation and today I'm using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation and I'm in the shade Shell Ivory. Um, oh, it'll focus, come on. And because it is the winter, it's freezing cold outside right now, I'm extremely pale as you can tell and finding a cool toned pale foundation at the drugstore can be very difficult for me. Um, that's why I was so excited when I tried this one out. It does match me pretty well, fingers crossed that that's still true. Um, but I would say it does dry down a little bit quickly and it is very matte. So what I'm going to do is first put my hair up. Um, so like I was saying, it does dry down pretty fast. So what I'm going to do with this foundation is work in sections. So I'll sort of start with my the lower quarter of this side of my face and then I go up here, go across and go down it's almost in a circle. You don't have to do it that way. But I find if I put the foundation all over and then blend it in, um, by the time I I'm done blending, it's already pretty dry. So you're going to want to start blending right away. Um, and with all liquid foundation, you should give it a good shake before you start applying it. And this one is nice. It does, even though it's so affordable and from the drugstore, it does have a nice little spatula. Um, so right from the get-go, you can just sort of paint it on. And unfortunately, this one does have a pretty strong smell. I would say it does smell a lot like paint, like that you would paint your walls and you're putting it on your face so that can um, throw some people off. If you're like sensitive to strong smells when you're doing your makeup, you might wanna avoid this one. Um, and when I want a little more coverage like I do today, just do a little bit more. And then we blend. Um, I'm using the Real Techniques Miracle Complexion Sponge. Um, I love this sponge from the drugstore. It's about $6. I usually get the two pack at Ulta. So you're saving even more. I think it turns out to be like four or $5 each when you get the two pack. Um, I still would say I do prefer the Beauty Blender, the original Beauty Blender, but that is $20. So if I'm gonna save $15 on a sponge and it does the trick, it gets everything done, it blends very well. I'll just say it doesn't get as squishy and soft as the original Beauty Blender, um, but I really don't have a problem with it. I think it works well. It's the best out of all the drugstore ones I've tried. I've tried some very bad drugstore sponges. Um, this one's definitely my favorite. More than the green, the Eco Tools one. More than. Um, That's it, and now we're gonna be moving on to concealer. So I'm using the CoverGirl Clean Invisible Concealer, and this is in the shade Fair. Um, so like I'm sure you know how to do, I'm just gonna draw on triangles, starting at like the inner corner, drag down, make a little triangle there. And I find this concealer doesn't have the best coverage, but like it said, it is invisible. It blends out so well. Um, and then I'm also just to highlight the rest of my face. Gonna do a little bit on my forehead, roll the nose, and the chin here. And I'm also gonna use the Real Techniques sponge to blend this out as well. So like I was saying, yeah, this concealer isn't the most full coverage. Um, like the rest of the world, the Tarte Shape Tape is my favorite concealer. So it is a little bit different going back and using this one after every day. Um, sort of using the Tarte Shape Tape because that is such full coverage. But um, every now and then I just kind of prefer to have a more sheared out 
concealer it does the trick i would say it covers any dark circles i have and it just blends so well like you can you can't really tell like you know where the concealer ends where the foundation begins it just sort of brained everything up and that's sort of the look i'm going for i want to look awake when i'm going to class in the morning or uh running errands doing groceries all that kind of stuff so now to set it down um you don't need to set this down like i said before i'm pretty oily so i like to set things down so um so excuse how dirty and old this is but i'm actually using the wet n wild mega glow contour palette i'm going to be using the lighter shade there it goes um and this is in the shade dulce dulce de leche so you can see i've used this contour powder quite a bit and i'm going to be using this one right here the lighter color just on my under eyes and this is just a real techniques contour brush but just because a brush says it's for contouring or for one thing, that doesn't mean you have to use it for that. So I really like this brush just at my under eyes. So um, just tapping it in and sort of pressing. I don't want to do too too much sweeping motions because that can sort of make weird lines in the concealer. Um, just anywhere where I put the concealer, sort of setting it down. And if you want, you can do a little bit on the sides of the face where you're going to be putting other powder products. Speaking of other powder products, now I'm actually going to go in with the other side of this palette and do a tiny bit of contouring, nothing too crazy. Um, I would say this is this contour can be subtle or it can be extremely intense, it's up to you. Um, I'm going to be using a tiny e.l.f. stippling brush, so this is going to help me blend it out a little better. If you wanted, you could do a more dense uh, brush and get a really sharp line right here. Um, but with this one, I'm just going to use a very small amount of product to tap off any excess. Starting, I like to start a little bit above my ear because um, it makes your cheekbones a little bit higher. So naturally, my contour would be about here, but in order to make my cheekbones a little lifted, I go a little bit higher and start like right there. So like I said, tapping off using a very little amount. And I just do sort of circular motions coming down like that. And I'm not adding any more. I'm just continuously blending it. I don't want any harsh lines. I don't want people to look at me and be like, oh look, that's where she put her contour. And again, emphasis on the blending. You don't want to have a white forehead with a brown line around the top. So really blend, 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 blend. And the other side. It actually looks a little more intense on camera than it does in person, which is a little weird, but we're going with it. Blending. Okay. And now to even further blend it and also to bronze up my face, give it a little warmth because I am using a very light foundation. My skin is very light right now, but to give it a little bit of like healthy glow um, and not just a contour, a little less matte, and that is the Physician's, Forder, Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. And now this is actually the most expensive product that I'm using in this video. I think it's about $14 right now at Ulta, um, but I would say it's totally worth it. I mean, this is a huge pan that you get. As you can see, I've hit pan. I've gone through a large chunk of it and I've had this forever and I use it basically every day. Um, I prefer it over many high-end bronzers that I've tried. And also, this is the shade Light Bronzer, which works out perfectly for me because, as I said, I am paler. Um, and then in the summer, they do have um, their original butter bronzer, which is like the medium shade and then a deep shade. And now, I mean, most people know Physician's Formula sucks at shade ranges, like truly terrible. Like there are three bronzers I c could work for me and with any other company, like I should not be able to pull off the, dark the darkest shade, but I can with Physician's Formula. So definitely I uh, would love to see more shades from them. But thankfully, if you have lighter skin color like me or even like a more medium skin tone, their butter bronzer would work perfectly. So I'm using this really big fluffy, it's kind of dense, but uh, not too crazy. And this is from Eco Tools, and this is a foundation and bronzing brush, but I mostly use it for bronzer. Um, so I'm just gonna swirl it around, tap off any excess. And we're basically going in with the same spots that we went with the contour, but a little less precise, a little more messy, a little more blended out, just to give some color overall to the face. 
So I'm going a little bit higher up, a little bit lower down, a little bit further down my cheek, just sort of giving some life back to my very pale skin. And also, it smells amazing. It smells like coconut and sunscreen, but like the good ones. And I'm not going anywhere for spring break this year, sadly. So I'll just sit around and apply this bronzer and feel better about myself. College. Also, sometimes I like to take this a little bit down the neck just in case there are any weird blending issues with my foundation and not matching. And you know, gives the appearance that I have a little bit of sun even though my skin is usually either white or red. Never, never bronze by itself, never bronze. Okay, so now we're all done with bronzer and going on to blush. The blush that I'm gonna use is by Revolution and this is the matte blush in the shade Nude. So like I said, this is a nude blush, but for me, it does turn out a little bit on the pink side. And this is a stippling brush from Eco Tool, or I'm sorry, from Real Techniques. This is a stippling brush. So I just sort of tap this in here again, tap off any excess, um, and start on the apples of the cheeks, and then sort of drag it up a little bit. And I find this is a pretty buildable blush. Um, I try to go pretty light-handed on blush. I'm not a huge, like, must have a million pounds of blush on my face person. I get pretty flushed on my own, even just like walking up a flight of stairs, you know? So I don't always need that to look, you know, that you're supposed to, it's supposed to give you that sort of like, oh, I just went for a brisk walk and I'm so healthy and glowing kind of look. I usually get that just from doing life. So that's it for blush. Now we're gonna go on to highlight and I'm so excited for this next product I'm using. This is probably my favorite product that I'm using in this video. And it is, from roll the ColourPop Super Shock. That's a tongue twister. Say that like seven times fast and you you can. Super Shock Cheek in the shade Lunch Money. And again, I've used the heck out of this baby. And there's still so much left. Um, I do use my finger. So I basically just rub my finger in there a little bit. Start at the very top of the cheek, just under the middle of your eye. And that's where I want to put the most highlighter, so I'm going to sort of tap it on there. And then lightly with my finger, I'm not like really digging into my skin. I'm almost like gliding across the surface, rubbing it out. Um, and then I'll use a clean finger to sort of blend it. You can use a brush with these products, um, but because of the formula, I find it works a lot better with your finger. And then if you really want, if you, if you don't feel like it's not blending out well or it looks patchy, you go in with your beauty blender or your sponge. Um, and tap it out and that will sort of mush it into the rest of your makeup. Look at that. This isn't even the most intense one they have and I didn't even build it up that much. If you want the really like crazy like blinding highlight, you can get that from ColourPop, um, especially with this formula, but you don't necessarily have to. And because this is sort of like my everyday look, um, some days I won't even put on highlighter, but on days that I do, I. I use this one and in a more like natural way and because I blended the other side I'm gonna also blend this side. <laughs> cool and that's actually it for the face so now I'm gonna zoom you in a little bit and we'll do the eyes. Okay and I apologize in advance I'm not gonna be looking at the camera for this because brows are my weakness when it comes to makeup. Um, that's what took me the longest to get the hang of and I would say I'm still improving every day but Practice makes perfect, so here we go. Um, I'm using the the NYX Precision Brow Pencil, and seriously guys, this is comparable to so many high-end brow products that I've tried, especially the Anastasia Beverly Hills, uh, what is it? Whatever her brow pencil is, I find this one to be just as good. It's a little bit more dry. I feel like I have to like pr maybe press a little bit harder into the skin. Um, but I don't mind that because then you can be a little bit more precise with it. So I'm going to start um, right above my tear duct right here. 
and I just sort of start by outlining the bottom of my brow. So I'm going to draw a line on the bottom to where I want it, how, the, how I want the shape to be, which my eyebrows are pretty shaped right now. They're a little thinner than I normally like. Um, so I might go down a little bit from where the hairs are just to make it a little thicker. And then I'm sort of going to use, since this is a uh, squared tip, I'm going to use the square tip to go up, 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 and out. So I'm just going to speed through this part really quick. All right, cool. So I filled in my brows and now I'm just going to go over them with a brow gel and I'm using the Essence um, Make Me Brow. It's a tinted brow gel, so it is going to give you it's going to give the hairs a little bit of color and also set everything in place. And this is in the shade Brownie Brows. Hmm. Nice. And this isn't my favorite brow gel of all time, but for $3, it is amazing. You do want to be careful about any clumps, I would say, to make sure you really wipe off the, the tip of the brush when you're pulling it out of the tube, because you might get a little bit too much and then be dealing with like one big brown clump in the middle of your brow and if that does happen you can always go in back with the little brush on the end of your brow product and brush it out and that should help if you accidentally put on too much gel all right and now for the eyelids I'm not gonna be doing a ton of eyeshadow or anything crazy like that this is every day most days I don't even wear makeup to class so when I do we're keeping it simple guys I'm going back in with the butter bronzer and I'm taking a simple eyeshadow brush. This is just a big fluffy brush. You can use any one that you have. This one I'm using is the Real Techniques base shadow brush. Um, swirl around, get some in there. Starting on the outer corner and working this in big circles. So windshield wiper motion and circle motion. And you can go down a little bit on your lid as well. And the trick to this is definitely to blend. I'm sure you've heard it before. It's gonna look really weird if you just have like a weird brown orange line going across your eyelid. But if it's blended out, it'll just give your eye a little depth, a little warmth, and no one will even be like, oh look, she put her bronzer on her eyeball. And that's it. And now we're going to go in with mascara. So today I'm using the CoverGirl Lash Blast. Um, it's the big orange one. I'm sure you've seen it before. Um, it's really good. I feel like it gives me a decent amount of volume, which is my number one priority with mascaras. And definitely a little bit of length, but I'm more, I'm all about the volume. And you can do, you can use whatever mascara you want and do as many coats as you want. Um, I usually just do one or two, so. Look at that, look at the difference already. Definitely if I was like going on some vacation and only could bring one makeup product out of everything I own, it would be mascara. Um, probably a higher end mascara, uh, my favorite of all time is the Too, Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara, but from the drugstore, this one is pretty great. And I just feel like mascara pulls everything together, especially for me, um, because I am blonde, my eyelashes are super blonde, so it almost looks like I don't have any without mascara because they're so like. Um, we're done with the eyes, and now all that's left is lipstick. So because this is such a neutral look, we didn't do any crazy blush, any crazy eyeshadow, you could pair this with a nude, a red, a pink, any lipstick that you want. Um, today, my lips are a little bit on the dry side because it's so cold and wintry and probably dehydrated. I'm going to go with a more moisturizing, creamy formula, but I do love my mattes every now and then. I do love my nudes. But today, I'm going to go with a little pop of pink um, and also a, little, a creamy formula. This is the Maybelline Color Sensational in the shade 705 Blushing Bud. Um, it can be a little confusing. This is like 
what I think what the shade is supposed to be, but the outside is like a bright purple. That's not the color I'll show you guys. This is the lipstick. I've gotten a decent wear out of this. This is one that I often throw in my purse or my backpack when I'm going around um, because it is moisturizing, but it does give you some color. So instead of a chapstick, I'll do something like this. It does have a little bit of a, like an artificial lipsticky smell, which even high-end lipsticks will usually have a smell, but they usually put perfume in them. Um, so like I said before, if you are sensitive to smells, this might be one of those products you want to avoid. And All right, and the very last final step, which is optional, but all of these steps are optional, do what works for you, is to set everything down. And today I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Photo Focus setting spray, I guess, yeah, photo focus setting spray. Um, this isn't dewy, I wouldn't say it's, I would say it's mattifying, it just sort of sets everything into place. Um, it doesn't have the best spray nozzle, I know some people are like really particular about the mist that comes out if it's like a little bit spitty or anything like that. It's not the worst, but it's not the best, but this is so affordable and I do think it extends how long my makeup lasts. So on days like today when I have class until late in the evening and then I'm running around doing other things, um, I really want everything to stay in place and not get um, runny or anything like that. So uh, I just hold it as pretty far away from my face and give it about three or five sprays. Just sort of moving my head around, moving around. All right, so now I'm gonna take my hair down. Not the best hair day, but we'll do what we can. We're in a rush, people understand. All right, and that is the finished look, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that it is as easy as it looks. Trust me, practice makes perfect. You may not be able to do this in 10 minutes on your first try, but after a week or even two weeks of doing this every day, finding out which products work best for you, finding out which brushes you like, it'll definitely become easier and easier, and I would say, if I decide to skip filling in my brows and just do the brow gel, I can do this makeup in three to five minutes, for sure. So definitely perfect if you're in a rush or if you just don't wanna spend that much time doing your makeup. I hope you guys enjoy, please press subscribe, comment down below what kind of videos you wanna see coming up next, and I hope you have a good day, bye.